Back in the 1880s, a failed U.S. Army experiment haunted the hunters, ranchers, and miners of the American Southwest. They're eating her, and then they're going to eat me. A red-haired camel with the bleach bones from a human skeleton dangling from its back attacked anybody and everybody who dared approach it. It was called the Red Ghost. In 1836, as Americans expanded across the western U.S. and encountered rough and rugged deserts, Lieutenant George Crossman wrote a paper explaining how camels could benefit the U.S. military operations in desert regions. He wrote, For strength in carrying burdens, for patient endurance of labor and privation of food, water, and rest, and in some respects speed also, the camel and the Arabian camel are unrivaled among animals. The ordinary loads for camels are from 7 to 900 pounds each, and with these they can travel from 30 to 40 miles a day, for many days in succession. They will go without water, and with but little food for 6 or 8 days, or it is said even longer. Their feet are well alike suited for traversing grassy or sandy plains or rough rocky hills and paths, and they require no shoeing. Crossman sent his paper to the U.S. War Department, where, unsurprisingly, it was ignored. Tell him to get stuffed! Down but not out, Crossman continued to advocate that the U.S. Army adopt camels for use in desert regions. And it wasn't until 1847, during the Mexican-American War, when the U.S. Army was operating in what is now Arizona, New Mexico, and northern Mexico, that they decided, hey, maybe camels aren't such a bad idea after all. A second report on camels was filed with the U.S. War Department. And this time, noted eggnog rioter and senator from Mississippi, Jefferson Davis, took notice. He read the report and fell in love with the project. He began pushing Congress to allocate funds to allow the U.S. Army to buy camels from Africa. However, many in Congress were rather cool to this idea. That said, the big mule industry too was unhappy and employed lobbyists to stop this camel project from going forward. By 1853, Davis had become Secretary of War under President Franklin Pierce. In 1855, he managed to get $30,000 from the Congress to fund his nascent Camel Corps project. Yes. Davis appointed Major Henry C. Wayne to head the experiment and ordered him to take the U.S.'s supply and sail to the Mediterranean to buy good camels and hire experts. After camel shopping around the Mediterranean and making a guest star appearance during the Korean War to visit the British, Oh, I like this place. Yeah. And technically, technically, I'm not breaking any rules, so... <laughs> Wayne and the USS Supply docked in Indianola, Texas in May 1856 with 34 camels and five Arab and Turkish experts. Wayne set up a breeding program in Texas, but because they'd spent only about 13000 of their $30,000, Jefferson Davis sent the USS Supply back to Egypt to get more camels. Meanwhile. In Texas, the men of the Camel Corps were supposed to get used to living and working with these camels. Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner. Eat the food. Eat the food! Camels, unlike horses and mules, can be very, very temperamental, and they can kill you. Uh, first, they can spit their gooey, stinky cut at you, and if they're really upset, they'll bite you. They've got some big incisors. They'll kick and stomp you to death. I mean, people even recently have died from camel attacks. Later that same year, the first serious experiment with these camels began. The Army wanted a surveying expedition to survey a wagon road from New Mexico to Arizona. The contract was awarded to Edward Beale, a famous Western explorer. But Beale didn't know that he was expected to use these camels when he initially got the contract. So when he found out the camels were coming with, he was not best pleased. Are you me? But a contract is a contract, so he used them anyway. Beale and the camels left San Antonio, Texas on June 25th, 1857, and just under five months later arrived at Fort Tejon near what is now Bakersfield, California. To Beale's surprise, the camels had performed magnificently. Initially, the camels had started slow, lagging behind the horses and mules in the train. But after a few weeks, the camels were actually outpacing the mules and horses. Don't say it. Don't you say it. Left. Come on! And Beale wrote glowing reports to Secretary Floyd, who passed that on to Congress. 
And so by 1858, the future of the U.S. Army Camel Corps was looking bright. The Civil War was a serious blow to the Camel Corps. Because the project was seen as Jeff Davis's baby, the North was not particularly interested in pursuing the project, and so by 1863, the U.S. auctioned off their camels. Some camels ended up working for private shipping companies, others were added to zoos and traveling circuses, and some were just eaten. Camels continued to play a small role in shipping in the West until the completion of railroads, which made the movement of goods much, much cheaper. After that, many camels were simply turned loose to roam wild, and these camels ended up roaming the West well into the 20th century. As for the Red Ghost, it's said that he met a rather inglorious end, being shot in a rancher's garden in about 1885. Holy cow! What you use, a 38? Uh, 38, 39, whatever it took. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and possibly a subscribe. I hope to see you in the next one.